Hey, what's up everybody? In today's video, I'm going to show you the top nine items that sold in the category of apparel because everybody's been asking about it. To preface this video, as always, I teach you about the actual apparel. I don't just go through it, bam, 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 what sold, how much I made and all that because you should learn about what you're selling not just brands. Don't be one of those people that just writes a list down and then goes like this and puts blinders on to everything in your Goodwill, in your thrift store, in whatever. You need to learn about why the brand is who they are, why you're picking it up, what kind of pants they are, what kind of shirt it is, what kind of jacket it is, why it's selling. That way you don't miss out on opportunities. The first thing that I see all the time, the first mistake that resellers make is that they just get a list because they go through a bunch of YouTube videos, right? They grab a big ass list and then they go. And if it's not in the list, they don't pick it up. Well, maybe you're going to miss out on products because you don't understand materials. You don't understand marketing. You don't understand branding. You don't understand sporting events or certain activities that are used for. I mean, so come on, we got to learn together. So let's get right into it. Here's the first product, Cool Pants Brown Coyote Men's 30 by 30 sports stretch, nylon spandex, hiking, MTB biking. That is a lot of nonsense, but those words are all keywords. First off, Cool, that, that brand, K-U-H-L, is a great brand to pick up. These pants weren't even up for less than a day, maybe. And I got an offer. I had them up for $44.99, but I took an offer, and you'll see what they sold for right now. I paid $3.72, ended up selling them for $36.99 plus $8.99 shipping. After fees and everything is collected, $34.64 off of $3.74. That is a great sale. The only issue with this was that the guy that was buying them asked me, I shit you not, like maybe 30 questions. And I answered all of them being the great customer service person that I am. I answered all of them, but I was like, bruh, come on, man. You're spending, I, I understand that you're spending $49.40 and it might be, it might not be a lot of money for me, but it might be for him. So out of respect, I answer everything, but I mean like, come on, bro, 30 questions, seriously? One thing to note here, let me look at the keywords. Keywords, look at that, spandex, hiking, MTB, biking. So these are not specific to hiking and specific to biking, but I can tell you that as a mountain biker, I would love to wear those. So I put in MTB. MTB means mountain biking. When you put MTB, you get a whole new crowd of people looking at your merchandise. They're not just joggers because you can call them joggers. You can call them whatever. I didn't call them joggers because I, if, I, if I called them joggers, they were going to be placed along with the Nikes and with the Under Armour, and it's just going to get all mixed in with a bunch of other stuff that I didn't want to mix in with. So I decided to niche it down to MTB Hiking Biking, and it worked out great. Plus, Cool, K-U-H-L, is a mountain company or like outdoorsy company. So there you go. It makes sense, right? I'm doing something new this week, by the way. I'm going to post some questions that I've got on apparel from the latest video that I posted that's gotten like 18,000 views super quick because everybody loved it. I said, you know what? I need to answer some questions on here. And then I also need to give props to those people that also helped me answer some questions because you'll see right now. If you guys have questions, you can always ask them and maybe in a following video, I will include you in some of the questions if they make sense. By the way, I got this idea from somebody called Justin Resales. I don't know him but I watch his videos. There is very few channels, and I mean a handful of channels that I watch, and he is very articulate. He knows what he's talking about, and he has a great program that is out and about. He just launched it. It's like an inventory program. I was a beta tester for his program. I'm not selling it to you. I actually don't use it. I don't need it for me, but maybe it is for you. So go check out his channel. Support a fellow reseller, super good dude, and he doesn't have any upspeak or up talk or whatever you want to call it. If you guys don't know what that means, upspeak means when somebody does this. I went to the mall and yesterday and I was talking to my friend. They ended with a question like that. If you talk like that, I assume that I'm not going to watch your content. That's just what it's going to be. I have crazy misophonia. That means people piss me off the way that they talk. If I do that, and if I piss you guys off, you can always tell me in the comments below because I love when people talk shit. It's always funny. Okay, let's keep going. 
This is the question that was posed. Thank you for this video. If the colors don't match up, what do you do to adjust the phone? I'm struggling with blues and greens. So I did answer her, but I, I gave a half-assed answer because a lot of the times I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to put them up like that. But that was just a bad answer on my part because I didn't have a better one, just to be clear. So somebody posted this one on a separate video. They said, camera settings set to preserve last and I like to turn off live picture mode. Use vivid filter, change to cool vivid for blue and purple. Increase the exposure, usually decrease for black. Square will be preserved from the last use as well as exposure and filter changes. I use iPhone. So to at Magel Cats, Magel Cats, Magel Cats. However you say that, thank you very much for this answer. You're going to help a lot of people because I honestly don't use the filter option and not because of him, I'm going to use the filter option. I don't know everything. You should take everything that anybody says with a grain of salt and test it for yourself. But he had a good idea, already tested it and it does work. Next product, Ella Bean flannel line shirt, men's medium reg, canvas shacket, burgundy long sleeve. I paid, I don't know how much I paid. I, I forgot to include it on there, but I think I paid four bucks for it. Elo Bean sells very well. They've been around for a very long time. And the key word there is shacket. It's not an actual word. It's a shirt jacket. That means it's not a jacket because it's not super heavy, but it's not thin like a shirt. So that's why they started calling them shackets. That's like a new cool term that I didn't know. My girl was the one that said, call it a shacket. I'm like, why? what the hell is a shacket? She said, well, it's a shirt that's also a jacket, but it's not a jacket and it's a shirt. And I said, oh, well, thank you very much for clearing that up. I bought it for four bucks. I'm going to assume that I bought it for four bucks. And I sold it for $29, $8.99 shipping after fees and everything else is taken into account. $25.12 was my total. So I ended up making $21.12 in actual profit. Great buy. Always pick up the yellow bean flannels. And if you notice, it was super basic, right? They don't all have to be plaid or they don't have to have allowed anything. Just the, the regular ones sell well. Wrangler Pro Gear Men's Camo Pants. 34 by 32. 34 is always a great, great size. In this case, these are hunting pocket or sorry, they're hunting pants. I put hunting pockets, brush, deer, zippered. Almost everything that is camo and hunting sells super well. I bought these, I paid up for these. I bought them for nine bucks at a Goodwill and I sold them for $29.99, $8.99 shipping. They sold super fast within like three or four days, I don't remember. After everything is taken into account, I made $13.67. The ad fee really got me, but I always promote with a high ad fee because it moves my stuff like this. If you don't believe it, try it. Try going over around 9%, anything over about 9% and you see a spike in sales. If you can't afford it, you can't afford it. If your margins can't take it, then I understand, but just try it and see. Let's go to another question real quick here. Oh, great and powerful Oz. Thanks for the video. Question, what do you use to generate your inventory tags? Well, thank you very much at E Richard E 9788. Ooh, give me one second, somebody here. I'm gonna make you a cameo. Oh, somebody was at the door. Just so you know, let me introduce you real quick. This is my cousin and the gentleman that owns El Regio Imports. He is the one that imports everything from Mexico. He's a super pro. His business earns about half a million dollars in sales. He knows what he's doing and he's the one that brought beer. So, hills, yeah. Now let's get back to the video. Dale, wey. Le voy a seguir, wey, nomás. Just try not to make any more noise at this. Okay, back to answering the question. What do I use to generate my inventory tags? I have an Excel sheet that does everything for me. It's super easy. I just put in the first number in the line and it prints out a whole page. Normally, I use a zebra printer to actually print the tags because it's a thermal printer. It saves you a lot of money. However, right now, I have a, a packet of one-up labels that I got. If you don't know what a one-up label is, it's basically a sheet of paper that has a bunch of labels on it. You print onto it and then you take the labels off. The reason I'm using those is because I bought them for like a quarter or 50 cents at, a, at an estate sale. And I'm not just going to let them sit just because I want to use my, you know, my thermal printer. I just use my regular printer. I print them on there until they're done. And then I go back to my thermal printer because I don't like to waste anything. You shouldn't waste either. All right, let's move on to the next one. Here we got Icon Contra Motorcycle Jacket Men's Medium Black Padded Textile Line Bike Riding. This is definitely my field right here because I am a motorcycle rider. 
If you guys want to know what my motorcycle looks like, this is what it is. Great looking bike. I used to also have a sport bike. This is more of a sport bike jacket. For those of you that don't know jack about motorcycles, motorcycle jackets usually sell for $30 and up because they have extra padding, they have carbon fiber, they're protective, they're uh, FR, means fire retardant. They have so much more technology than a regular jacket. I got this sucker, well it says zero dollars, but I think it's somebody gave it to me or something like that. I got this sucker, let's just say zero dollars, and I sold it for 60 bucks, $10 shipping. After fees and everything is taken into account, I made $44.11 since I didn't pay anything for it. I made $44.11. Great jacket, always pick up motorcycle jackets. You just have to pick them up at the right price, but you almost always are gonna sell them. Just make sure that they have the padding is intact. They're not all jacked up from the elbows or from the back because that's the first thing that goes when somebody has a fall. Make sure it doesn't have a lot of road rash if somebody did have it when they fell. Road rash is definitely a no-no because it can, it reduces the protection and the safety. Also, because they are safety uh, equipment, you gotta be real careful. You gotta make sure that they're in good condition because if somebody gets hurt, you can get sued. And yes, that's a thing. So just be careful. I do it because I am definitely, definitely comfortable buying stuff like this because I have a whole bunch of jackets in my own closet that I use. I have helmets, jackets, I have pads, I have all kinds of stuff. Rock Mountain Ranch wear. Men's XL Western shirt square pearl snaps. Oh man, this is great. First of all, it's a vintage shirt. And second of all, the square pearl snaps are definitely a pickup. I think I know why people love them so much because they are so unique. They're not circles. Squares look great. Look at that. They look like you're wearing diamonds on your chest and on your uh, sleeve. Great looking shirt. I bought it for $8 at a flea market at my local flea market. I sold it for $49 plus $7.99 shipping. And then after ad fees and everything is taken into account, I made $42.07. So I made a little over $33.07 in profit. This is a great pickup. Western wear sells very well. You just gotta be careful what you pick up in Western wear. For example, Wrangler. If you pick up Wrangler, fine. I sell Wrangler all the time, but you gotta pick it up really cheap because Wrangler is now in Walmart stores. So if you pick up like new Wrangler, you're not gonna get a lot of money for it because Walmart sells them for nothing. I mean, they're making, I don't even know how they're making money on it. They're selling them for like nine bucks, 10 bucks. What can you really expect to sell yours for? If you get vintage, damn it, boy, you're gonna make a lot of money and especially with denim. So always pick them up. But this was definitely a great pickup. Now, let me answer another question. Annette Horn 1696 asks, well, says informative video then asks, should the sleeve length measure be included on the shirt? Okay, in a perfect world, definitely you should always include sleeve length because you need to know, like I have very long arms considering that I'm only like five, eight and a half, five, nine, maybe I have very long arms and I always have a problem with sleeve length. However, I don't include it. And why don't I include it? Because it's a waste of my time. Over six or 700 garments that I've sold, only two times has anybody ever asked me about the sleeve length. So this is how way I think about it. If I'm taking five or 10 seconds more to do sleeve length, you people would say, well, why don't you just take the time to do it? That way you don't get you know, any questions, that way you don't have to do anything after. And I say, okay, fine, let's think about it this way. If, I, if it takes me about 10 seconds to shoot an extra picture, because I gotta put the tape on, I gotta hold it, whatever, I gotta do the measurement, if it takes me 10 seconds and then it's like, well, it's just 10 seconds, right? When you multiply that at a high level by thousands of garments or even hundreds of garments, that's a lot of time extra that you're spending doing something that you shouldn't be doing. If nobody's asking for it, then why are you including it? Well, what do they do ask? Okay, so they didn't ask for it 598 times, but the two times that they asked for it, I go to where my inventory is, I grab the inventory and I measure it. Wouldn't that take longer? That's what people normally ask. Yes, because I have to go get it, got to take it out, got to take the picture, got to take the measurement, got to send it out. Fine. But that only takes me, let's just say, 60 seconds or even two minutes, twice. But I'm spending 10 seconds, six or 700 times. Do the math, people. It doesn't compute. You shouldn't be doing things that you don't need to be doing. It's like paying interest to your credit card company before it's due. Why the hell would you do that? Don't do that. 
do things that are necessary now, not later. I'll give you another example, like the people that pack everything up before it's even sold. Well, it's because it's already ready. That way on Mondays, you know, if it sells, I already have it ready. I just, you know, I put it on my scale and I measure it and I ship it out. And I said, okay, that's just stupid. And the reason it's stupid, why are you doing work when it's unnecessary? What if that item never sells? That's time that you're never going to get back. You always have to calculate in time. My time is hella important. So I never do anything that I don't have to do. Take it from a six figure seller, do the same thing. If you don't care, you want to take all the time in the world, fine. Then add all the measurements you want. But I'm trying to provide a different perspective of logic. Let's move on to the next one. Here we got C.E. Schmidt, women's overall coveralls, large, short, 14 by 16, winter bib. I've talked about this before. Coveralls, overalls, they always sell. You just have to get them at a cheap price and they always sell. I've never not sold one. Sometimes they take a little longer than usual, but this didn't even take long. My mom got this for me. It says right there, look, $3, mom. Mom bought it for me and it sold within, I don't know, I think it was like maybe a month, but it was February. So it was already got, kind of getting hot. It is winter wear. So you would think that it would sell, it would take longer to sell, but it sold quick. Three bucks. How much did I make on it? $37.91 plus $14.99. After fees, after everything is taken into account, I made $35.50 thanks to my mom. So I made $32.50 in profit because of her. Gracias, Emma. Always recruit people into your business. Let people help you. It's all good. Everybody will win. Here we have True Religion Men's Billy Bootcut Jeans, 36 flat. These are very specific jeans. They're made in the USA and they're Y2K. They are vintage, true vintage jeans. True Religion kind of tanked in price. It tanked in a lot of different ways, but it is still definitely purchased everywhere because especially when they were made in the USA, they were made really well. The stitching, the stitching was great. The denim held up. The brand was awesome and they look good plus baggy and boot cut and all that is coming up. It's coming back again. I bought them for only nine bucks. Look at how much I made. 67.13 plus 8.99 shipping. After fees and everything are taken into account, 50.41. In this case, I added, or I put these in priority mail instead of USPS Ground Advantage because a person reached out to me and they said, hey, I have a, they had a, a special event and I said, no problem. I could have saved myself $1.50, but why would I do that? I know that this person is going to come back and buy from me because I was decent enough to be like, you know what? A dollar 50, it's fine, bro. Don't worry about it. I make more than enough money to help other people. So why wouldn't I want to do that? Now, let me answer another question. Chikal209 says, awesome video. Do you attach and remove the lanyard every photo session or does it have adhesive? The lanyard he's referring to is the one that I always wear that you guys see on the videos that I, that I put on to take pictures. I always remove it. There's no way in hell I'm ever going to buy anything that has an adhesive because first of all, my phone, which I can't show you because it's, I'm using it to record, but my phone is a, one of those phones that has the, I don't know what it's called, the magnet safe that you can put it on your, like on a, on a plate and it charges without having to plug it in. So I can't do it anyways, because then I wouldn't be able to charge it. I wouldn't be able to use it. And second of all, I don't want to put anything on my phone. I want my case to be basic. It's super basic. It's green, beautiful case. I've had it for a long time and I wouldn't use it anyway. So I do recommend the lanyard. If you guys want to know, or if you guys haven't seen it or you want to buy it or you want to check it out, I'm going to link it below so you can buy it. It's one of the best pieces of equipment that I've ever purchased. And it's only, I think it now it's like eight bucks or nine bucks. Buy it before the price goes up. Sometimes people get greedy and they jack up the price. So get as many as you can while you can get them. Look at this one. Rebel Spirit shirt, men's large, white long sleeve embroidered velvet. That is an ugly ass shirt. I mean, it, it's, it's nice. It's nicely made. It's got embroidery. It's got a dragon. It's got the, the pearl snap buttons. It's very intricate, but it's an ugly ass shirt. It's ghetto, man. I wouldn't wear it but I'm not the one, uh, I'm not the one buying it. Bought it for 10 bucks, got it at Goodwill, sold it for $67.99 plus $7.99 shipping. At the end of the day, I ended up with $48.92, so I made $38.92 in profit. When, when you see big, bold embroidery, it just costs you more money to make. It just always does. No matter, no matter where you make it, it's gonna cost you more because it's uh, labor intensive and it is material intensive. That means you gotta take more time and money to make it. 
So almost always you're going to make money. I honestly thought when I picked it up, I thought it was Affliction. Affliction is one of those brands that might, if you see it, pick it up. Minimum you'll get for an embroidered Affliction shirt is about 25 bucks, but usually they'll go for a lot more. I said, you know what, pick it up. I picked up three of them. I've sold all of them except one. Daydream about nice things asked. What size clothes bag do you have and where do you buy them? Great video, thanks for sharing your knowledge. Well, ain't this a freaking coincidence? The gentleman that I showed you earlier, his business called El Regio, all he does is purchase product from Mexico, imports it through the, through the port of entry in the South Texas border, sells it in the Rio Grande Valley, San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, Houston, and keeps going up. He is a business associate. We're hoping to do something bigger with time. The first thing that I said was, what can I import? Bags, why not? Freaking bags, I buy them by the kilo, like, you know, <laughs> I'm kidding. I can't even say it because of stupid algorithm, but um, I buy them by the kilo. That means 2.2 pounds worth of bags. Somebody asked me, how many bags is there? I don't know. I don't count them. I just use them, but I have a whole bunch of them. Thankfully, he came today and he's staying with me because <laughs> I am almost out and he brought me some bags. So I said, great, awesome. Now I don't have to go order from freaking Amazon. I do have a link below, by the way, if you ever run out of bags, I do sometimes have to buy bags from Amazon. There are good ones and they're bad ones. I just get really cheap ones that do well enough. If you guys wanna see what it is, check in the links below, they'll be right there. Next one up for bids, Oakley Blade Board Shorts, men's size 30 stretch red, black swimming hydrofuse. These board shorts say zero, and I paid zero because they're actually my board shorts. I worked with the Oakley company for a long time in my 20s. It was a great company to work for. Now, I don't know, I'm not there, so I, I can't say anything about it now, but when I was there, it was great, I loved it. Now I get to sell all this stuff. I'll explain to you why you should sell them, but first, let me show you. They were really used, and I still got $16.99 for them, $8.99 shipping, and there's VAT tax, that means that they went overseas. After everything is said and done, I made $15.60. So I used them for a long time. I think I had those for probably like eight years or nine years used and abused, and I still got that money. There's a couple of things to look for in board shorts. Number one, Oakley has something called Hydrofuse. Hydrofuse is basically a pocket where you can put items in there like your ID and other things, and it helps it repel water. This is also four-way stretch. That means it stretches this way, this way, you know, it stretches every kind of way, so they last longer. That means that you don't tear them easily. Also, it's got like beading, it's got beading on the waist, so that they don't move. Great board shorts and they're a great length. They're a true board short, not like the stupid board shorts that they have now, which are above the knee, that look kind of weird. They're like, like, nah, man, I'm not gonna look like a pansy. I only wear short shorts when I'm running because I'm a true runner. I've been running since I was a little kid. But other than that, I don't wear short shorts. They gotta be an appropriate length for a man. That was the last item and let me answer one last question that people have been asking me a lot because I love this question and I wanna answer it on video. So this person asks, let's see, retro bubble zero. I think this is zero. Can you still do this if you're not wearing a gun in the house? Hilarious. If you guys notice, a lot of the times when I shoot my videos, I have my weapon on me. That's just me. If you're being sarcastic, it's all good. Don't worry, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. I have a very thick skin. If you're asking for real, let me give you the real answer. Number one, for those of you that think that I'm doing it to show off and I wanna be a badass, like that's not why I'm doing it at all. The gun is an extension of me. I carry it 99% of the day. No matter what I'm doing, no matter where I'm at, unless I can't carry legally, because there are like federal buildings, schools, there's other places that you can't carry. Other than that, it's with me at all times. And I'll give you a couple of reasons. Number one, and the most important, because I am not a victim. I will never be a victim. You're never gonna find me curled up in the corner somewhere because somebody's trying to unalive me or somebody's trying to do something to me and they're just cowering. I can't do that. I can't live my life that way. This is the great equalizer, and I guarantee you, if somebody tries to hurt me, I can promise you that I am gonna use my equalizer and equalize you. That's just what it's gonna be. Secondly, I am a big, big proponent of the Second Amendment. We all have to be ready for a tyrannical government. Everybody should carry in my eyes. You should teach your kids from when they're little gun safety because they should know how to protect themselves in case something happens from regular people on the street, from somebody trying to break in, and from my tyrannical government. So you will always see me doing that. I don't always show it, it's just that I'm in a t-shirt. I don't normally open carry. 
usually I have a, a button down, long sleeve, almost always every single day, v-neck and long sleeve, and it's always covering it. So you can never really see it. I show it on camera because I wanna make sure that you guys know that you should exercise your right as an American citizen because nobody else in the entire world has this written in into their constitution. No one, no country. That's why the United States is the best country in the world. You should be proud to live here and you should protect it at all times. That's it everybody, thank you very much for listening. These were the nine items that I sold in the category of apparel. I hope that I taught you something today. If not, that I hope that I entertained you at least. As always, give this video a like, share this with anybody that needs to see it, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already so you don't miss videos like these. See you in the next one, peace! Oh wait, and cheers. I started before the beer got here, so. Testeando el pinche microfono, testeando. Next product, LL Bleen Flat.